welcome to another episode of What Are You Reading? What Are You Writing? I'm your host, Karen E. Osborne, author of Getting It Right, Women's Fiction, Suspense, Page Turner, Tangled Lies, a murder mystery that came out last year, and Reckonings that just came out uh, last month. I'm so excited. And today, we have a nonfiction writer with us. Today, we have somebody who's going to change your life. So let me introduce you to Tracy. And Tracy, tell me how to pronounce your last name. Seekum. Just like it's just like it's written. So today we have Tracy Seacom. I should have asked her that before, right? Mm-hmm. All right. So here we go. Let me tell you a little bit about Tracy, and then we'll get into our conversation. Tracy is an author, an entrepreneur, a life coach. Her book, From People Pleaser to Soul Pleaser, has received excellent reviews. Now listen to a couple of them. So here's one, chock full of insightful information, thought provoking tasks. She makes you work just so you know, and relatable examples. Tracy's debut book did not disappoint. And then here's another. This book is an amazing resource on how to live your best life possible. Wow, hello Tracy. Hi, Karen. So even though, um, our not even though, but our purpose is to talk about your book, talk about your journey, how you got here, all those things. But because I have this thing about Australia, <laughs> I, I have had the pleasure of visiting your amazing country three times, including Tasmania. Like how many people can say that? How many Americans? Not many. Not many. <laughs> many have been to Tasmania. So I just wanted you to share with our mostly American audience, you know, where you are and um, tell us what season you're in and just some little inside tidbits about life in Australia. Well, I'm in Adelaide, which is in the south and it's in the centre. So most people know about the eastern states of Australia, like Queensland and, for example, New South Wales, where Sydney is. But I'm right in the centre. So if you went straight up from me, that's where you would get to Ayers Rock, which is right in the middle of the country. And it's winter at the moment, which is why I've got a jumper on and it's very cold for us at the moment. (laughs) Yes. So um, so Perth is on the West Coast, but Adelaide is not. It's in the centre of the country. That's right. And we're on the coast as well. And I live right near the beach, but we're right in the middle. Yeah. Oh, so you live near the beach. So when it's summer, it's quite lovely where you are. Yeah, absolutely. I walk along the beach every morning. It's beautiful. Ah, yes. I'm, I am right near the beach as well here on the East Coast of Florida. Oh, and beautiful. It's quite lovely as well, I will say. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So um, tell us about, so clearly this was a life journey that brought you to the book. You were actually doing this work, living this life, then doing this work, and then decided to write a book. So just give us a little sense of that journey. So I was um, burnt out back in 2015. I had no idea that I was burnt out, but I think I'd been like that for several years. I'd become a workaholic, which really started when I was quite young because I was a perfectionist and I was a people pleaser. And so all of my self-worth was tied up in success and achievement, which drove me to work harder and harder to just achieve the next thing. And so when my mum passed away in 2016, she was also a people pleaser. And I think losing her made me wake up and realise that I was spending my life trying to prove that I was good enough and that I was burning myself out and neglecting what was really important to me in my life. And so I started on my own self-discovery journey and sort of shifted from people pleaser to soul pleaser and then thought perhaps other people might benefit from that. And so I took hundreds of people through the program that I developed called from people pleaser to soul pleaser. 
And after seeing their results, I thought more people need to know about this. And so that's why I decided to write the book. Oh, that's wonderful. So um, so you enrolled people in this program, people just in Adelaide or people throughout Australia or worldwide? Well, it was worldwide. Um, most people are in Australia, but there have been people to go through my program from America, for example, and from the UK. Um, but I saw that it was a universal problem and I saw that the solution works for everybody because when we talk about the soul, um, it's not a preference. We all have one. And if we can shift from trying to please people and people who have conditioned us to believe certain things and shift that to actually aligning with our soul, then life becomes more of a flow and more enjoyable and allows us to really be ourselves. So I knew that it would work for anybody who was open to shifting and could realize that they have some people-pleasing tendencies. Yes, you know, when I think about my own fraught relationship with my mother and my father, <laughs> I think I wasn't so much a people-pleaser as I was a parent-pleaser. And yeah. well into adulthood, well into after having children and all of that. And I imagine that all applies, right? It's the people yeah. pleaser side can be to all kinds Lots of, of people. different ways. Yeah. And it usually does start with pleasing your parents. And it's a really mm -hmm. good thing for parents to become aware of um, because sometimes we can be a people pleaser. So we've grown up trying to please our parents. But then once we learn this about ourselves, we can look at what we're doing to our children and realize, mm. oh, they can feel very dependent on my emotions. So I need to be aware that I can allow them to not feel like they're the ones that have to keep me happy. I can keep myself happy. So it's the full circle, you know, realizing how you grew up and who you were people pleasing, but also as an adult, who is trying to please you all the time as well? That's so good. So it's good for parents as well as for personal journey. That's, That's right, exactly. That is excellent, excellent. So um, when you think about the end result that you're looking yeah. for, you know, um, the, the end result of reading your book, the end result of going through your program, going to one of your retreats, I would, I thought, oh, I want to go back to Australia. I need to go to one of her retreats and go yeah. see my friends. I have three mm -hmm. amazing friends in Australia. And I could just like go to a retreat and then visit yeah, them. Absolutely. When you think about that, when you think like, okay, you you kind of finished the book. What what do you want your readers to feel, to experience? What's that end point you're seeking for us? Well, the end point, my goal is that you will really discover who you really are. And when you know how magnificent you are, when you realize mm. that you are an aspect of divinity, an aspect of all that is, God, if people feel comfortable with that word, then you, there is nothing to prove. You are loved unconditionally. And when you can love yourself like that, then you don't need other people's approval or recognition which frees you to be yourself and live the life that you choose rather than the life that you think you should live, live or the life that you think other people want you to live. And I think if we could all be kinder to ourselves, we would be kinder to each other, which would make the world a better place. That is, that's so beautifully said, Tracy. You know, one of the things that, that worries me, I don't know if worry is the right word, but when People decide or hear the message that, you know, I am who I am and I'm enough and, um, and, and I'm lovable and all those good things that sometimes we can go too far the other side and not think we have to grow, you know, mm. that, that who I am is enough, who I am yeah. is just fine. And, and don't we need to keep growing no matter even when we become a soul pleaser, isn't that still a journey to, to keep going? Yeah, that's such a great question. Absolutely. So when you discover your true essence, you also discover your purpose. And in my opinion, our purpose is joyful expansion. And so we actually came here to grow. Otherwise, we wouldn't bother because when we're non-physical, I believe that we're perfection. So we come here and we have all sorts of different traits and all sorts of different experiences. 
And we wanted to experience the joy of that contrast so that we could evolve and continue to grow. And because we're all one and we're all connected, when we grow, the whole grows. And so there's this beautiful opportunity that not only does our growth help us, but it actually helps everybody around us. Oh, I love, I love that. I love that. And believe it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So um, your book has six steps. Can you, I mean, we want you all to buy the book, everybody. Yes. <laughs> but can you share an example of a step or an exercise or just, just give the audience some taste of what to expect? Yeah. So the first step is wake up because we really need to become aware. So in my example, when I was a workaholic, I was so buried into that life that I was living quite unconsciously. And so I was very unaware that I was burning out. I was very unaware that I was addicted to working. And I was particularly unaware of the fact that it was because I was trying to prove myself. And that's why no matter how successful I got, I just needed more. Mm -hmm. And there's a big difference between needing something and enjoying something. There's nothing wrong with enjoying success. I mean, that's, we love that. But it was that need that kept pushing me that it was never good enough. It didn't matter what I achieved. I just had to continue to force myself and push myself to get the next thing. So this first step, I really share all of the symptoms that I had of being a people pleaser, the ones that were negative, the ones that weren't really serving me or other people. Because when we need other people to approve of us, we come across as needy and it's actually exhausting for other people as well. So it's not the same as unconditional love. It's actually got some icky, you know, claws in it where I'll do this for you as long as you like me. And you don't really like being around people like that too much. So any, everybody benefits from this awareness, which is the first step to change, is to understanding what it is that you'd like to change. So you give people an exercise to help discover what that is. They're there because I noticed in the in the review they talked about that there were great exercises to do. Yeah. So one of the exercises is doing a clean out so to speak so a little bit like you know when you go through your wardrobe and you get rid of those clothes that you don't wear anymore it's the same with this so you go through all the things that you do in your life on a regular basis and you check in with why you're still doing them because often we take something on and we have a very good reason at the beginning but as we continue to do it we may may have changed and we may no longer have that same why and so you want to say well Am I doing this because I think I should? Am I doing this because other people want me to do it? Or am I doing it because I choose it, because I still choose it and I love it and I want to keep doing it? And then you can either stop doing it, you can modify the way you're doing it, or you can embrace it and love it and continue to choose to do it. Um, Otherwise, we become resentful because we're doing things that we don't really want to do, but we haven't taken the time to make a new decision about that thing. Yeah, yeah, that makes so much sense. Um, so uh, one of the things that, well, two questions. So one question is, as I work through this, through the steps and work through, um, you know, how am I going to get get change and see the change, are there ways that I can observe like do you help the reader observe whether or not they've actually taken the step because you know sometimes people read a to-do book and it's like oh this is so great I'm going to tell my friend about it and I filled in all the you know the quiz questions and everything but how do I check in and know that I've actually achieved something yeah Yeah, great question. So it really comes down to how you feel. So usually people who are drawn to this work are not their happiest selves. You know, they realize that there must be more to life. A lot of people say that to me. I always say, if you think there's more to life, you're right. Um, And they might feel disconnected or lost, or they might feel exhausted or overthink things or second guess themselves. And so those things will change. The things that they were experiencing that they wanted to change will change. So people 
report to me that when they go through the program or read the book, the first change is that the exact same life that they were already living, they see it differently. They see it through new eyes, more appreciation, more sense of the wonder and magnificent of their life. And they really see the colours and are more present. So there's a shift in the way that they experience their current life. And then they start to notice that there is more serendipity, that things are falling into place, that there's more flow. They happen to be in the right place at the right time. And of course, that all comes from aligning with your soul and listening to the signs from your soul. Step three is follow your signs. And we're receiving signs from our soul all the time. But if we're stuck in our head and we're trying too hard, we're really blocking that out and we just can't receive them. So there are all these little cues that you'll be given throughout the book of what to look out for so that you can notice that the work that you're doing is paying off and you're experiencing the changes. Oh, that's just beautiful. That's beautiful. Yes, that makes so much sense. So this um, this show is called What Are You Reading? What Are You Writing? And I would be remiss to not ask you before we wrap up about are there books, and it could be in a totally different genre or books that would supplement the work that they're doing with you through their book or you know, what books could you recommend to the audience? Well, um, one of my absolute favorites is Ask and It Is Given by Esther Hicks. I think that that's a fantastic summary of how important our emotions are and the fact that we can actually control our emotions. And another very life-changing book for me was the Conversations with God series with Neil Donald Walsh. I found that I cried when I, you know, read through mm -hmm. the first few pages of the first book because it really rang true for me. It felt like I'd come home and that was the truth. And I think that that's a really lovely way to know whether you resonate with a book. Yes, that is. That sounds beautiful. Well, thank you. Thank you so much. This has been, I could talk to you for another hour. <laughs> so, this is excellent. And I hope you have enjoyed it as well. And that you will give this a try from people pleaser to a soul uh, pleaser. Uh, oh, you know what I wanted to ask you, though? I did say there was two parts. I forgot to ask you, is this primarily for women or is this for like men and women is it for teenagers like you know is, is there a target audience that this is perfect for or is it everybody well in general I find that it's perfect for women over 30 but having said that I've I've got some teenagers reading it and people in their 20s who have absolutely loved it and I've had a lot of men go through the program so I have two groups um, for the program a women's group and a men's group I thought it was only going to be for women but turns out that there are men who are people pleasers as well. So I think it's for everybody. That makes sense to me. Absolutely. So where can our audience find out more about uh, your work, about your book? How can they find you? So my website is my name, tracybeacom.com.au. Um, there is a book page which will lead you to where you can buy the book, but also everything about my services. And I have lots of freebies on my website as well. I have mm. a meditation series, a free soul pleaser group on Facebook where there's lots of free training. Um, and I have a free book that can be downloaded as well. Oh, that's wonderful. Look at that. All kinds of freebies too. And remember it's .au because she's in Australia. So you want to uh, remember that. Well, thank you so much, Tracy. It's been delightful meeting you and speaking with you. And I'm so glad that all of you were able to join us today. I hope that you will follow up with Tracy, write her, let her know, you know, that you would watch, watch the program and, and that you will buy her book and and give it a try or give it to a friend who needs it. You know who she, you know who she is. <laughs> Take care, everybody. And I look forward to seeing you at the next episode of What Are You Reading? What Are You Writing? Bye, everyone. <laughs>